What's up everybody, welcome back. Today, I'm actually jumping on a plane to fly up to Boston. And it's actually to knock off something on my bucket list. I'm flying to Boston to go to Portland, Maine, to go to New Hampshire, to end in Killington, Vermont, to knock three states off my list. What list am I talking about? Today, we're talking about becoming a 50 stater. And since it's cold in Vermont, I gotta make sure I got the right clothes on today. All right, let's go. All right, everybody, so since I haven't finished this bucket list item of, of my own, I'm gonna have this broken down in a couple of different pieces. And the reason is because I still got a couple of trips left I gotta do. I started traveling early on. My parents sacrificed a lot so that I could go and see some really cool spots and, and they did let me travel when I was a kid. The, the cool piece to that is that I got some of those states marked off the bucket list without me knowing that I was actually creating a list of 50 states I wanted to hit. And a lot of that cost was incurred by my parents and not me. With that said, the majority of the states that I have visited so far have been funded by myself, yours truly. The states that my parents did take me to were Alaska, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Obviously, I lived in Florida, South Dakota, and Wyoming. So a 50 stater is not something that is unique to me. There is a whole entire community around becoming a 50 stater. A 50 stater is known as hitting the 50 states within a certain time frame. Mine personally is by 30 years old and I'm running out of time because my birthday is June 3rd and I will be 30. But not only do they need to hit those 50 states, they also have some restriction to it. A general restriction that most 50 staters do abide by is that it's not just crossing the line into the state, it's actually doing something there. Making a pit stop, essentially, in that particular state. Give you an example, I recently helped one of my friends drive a car down from Michigan, and I had to make sure that we hit Indiana. We drove into one of the smallest towns in Indiana, saw a very touristy spot, and continued on our way down to Florida. There's your pit stop. That's my personal restriction on this 50 stater list but everybody's got a different one. And if you actually go check out the 50 Stater website, there are a lot of different things that you can add or take away. What I will share is some of the hacks that have worked for me and that I'm even using for this trip up there. One of the easiest hacks, and this is actually going to tie directly into cost, is actually bringing some people with you. If you like to travel, you most likely have friends that like to travel too. You have to find hotels, you have to find a rental car if you're not bringing your own, you have to buy food, maybe if you have to cook, and I, I know I can't cook, so that's that's an issue there if you bring some extra people with you and actually want to enjoy their company they can help disperse the cost so getting these 50 states done is going to be a lot cheaper I have done a lot of travel by myself but some point or another during some of my trips I'll start out the trip on my own but then I'll end up meeting up with one of my friends halfway through for a couple of days in a city that I want to end up going to <clears throat> which leads to the next hack if you're like me you have a very specific destination in mind I'll use this trip that I'm going on today as a good example. My destination is Vermont, Killington, Vermont. They call it the beast of the Northeast. I want to spend New Year's there and I want to go snowboarding because I haven't done it in a long ass time. But I've got to hit other states, so what else is nearby? New Hampshire and Maine. So the hack here is essentially picking your main destination, the, the destination that you're super stoked about. And I'm not saying Maine and New Hampshire are bad places to hit. I'm just saying I'm more interested in going to Vermont. We're going to go from Friday night all the way to New Year's Day, so that's about four days. Actually, hang on. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's actually five days. I did really well in Maine. This next hack might be kind of self-explanatory, but I'm still gonna say it because maybe not everybody thinks about it this way. I've had a chance to live in three different states. Lived in Florida. Damn, my math is really off. Four different states. I've lived in Florida, born and raised, lived in Georgia, lived in California, and lived in Washington State. Those are basically different corners of the country, and so I've had a chance to also be able to drive instead of actually fly over to some of these different destinations, and I've also had a really good job that I had a chance to travel for work. If you work for a job that gives you an opportunity to travel for work, stay a couple extra days and catch a flight back on Sunday or continue working on Monday, whatever works for you. But if you're in a brand new state that you could probably rent a car, spend a hundred bucks and drive somewhere versus spending 
$300 on a flight and renting that $100 car, why not save some money and just spend a little extra time on the weekend? Another hack I wanna bring up is if you are traveling a lot for work or if you're just traveling a lot in general, please make sure to start using one particular brand, whether that's car rental, airline, build up points with that particular one so you can use it. My South America flight and my flight over to Europe for the first time, I spent like $200 and it's because I had so many points from working. I've also spent points getting up to Washington DC. I've spent points going back and forth from Seattle to Florida when I lived in Seattle. So points really come into play in terms of saving money and cutting back on the cost. My last hack for you on this particular video is going to be looking for the opportunity to hit those states. An example here is when I actually left my job in 2016, I drove across country and I made it a point to hit particular states that I had not hit and really don't wanna fly back to. An example here would be Kansas. Sorry, everybody in Kansas. Not my favorite place. It's really about making sure that you're thinking about it the entire time that you wanna get this done. You wanna hit your 50 states, you're just actively thinking about it. The good news is that I am almost done with these three states. I'll actually only have, I believe, seven left. Yes, I actually had to look at my board over here. I do have seven left. It's so West Virginia, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, North Dakota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. I've even actually got the dates planned out so I can actually hit, for example, North Dakota in April or May so I'm not dying in the winter tundra in North Dakota. And it looks like my last two states are gonna be Iowa and Wisconsin because on the weekend of my birthday, my friend is having a wedding and that's where I will be going to Wisconsin. I know, I'm cutting it real close. There are also a lot of different ways to cut costs and I think that is another piece that Maybe some people look at this and say, there's no way I'm actually gonna be able to hit all 50 states. It's a lot more about how, and it is a lot more accessible, you just gotta figure it out. I just talked about some of the, the hacks earlier, one of which was actually traveling with other people. Uh, another one could be essentially, instead of flying, you can drive. Another one in terms of cost was actually gonna be using the company money, not maliciously, but traveling for work and then spending a few extra days, they owe you a flight back to your home city. Why not rent a car and go some extra places instead of having to spend $400? I'm gonna run some quick math for you. And yes, I'm using my phone because phones have the best calculator. Do you remember when we were in elementary school? And I say we, I mean, I'm 29, so millennials win. They said we would never use calculators. There's literally one on your phone. Anyways, what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna add up, let's say if you do three states, and that's a flight and a rental car. You multiply it however we wanna multiply it. I'll explain it in a second. Get multitask. All right, so I added everything up and I actually looked at my map I have on my wall and grouped a couple of states into groups of three. I added in a flight that was probably right in the middle, the average, especially with Spirit and Frontier, which I know they're not the best airlines, but they are cheaper typically if you go with a carry-on and like a backpack. I also added in a rental car for right around $100, and this is not counting anybody else traveling with you, it's just you, multiplied that by three days. So I broke it down into 16 different groups, and the flight for each one was probably gonna be, let's say, $350. It could be more, it could be less. I'm trying to give a middle here so you have a, a general idea. 350 multiplied by 16 is $5,600, 5600 a rental car for three days for each one of those trips, so $100 times three is 300, times 16 is $4,800, $4,800. Combined, just for travel, which is gonna be the most expensive piece, is gonna be $10,400. You can get super creative with food, you don't have to eat the nicest places, and of course, if you have any alcohol, that really adds to the bill. There are also things like Airbnb, which I didn't have when I first started, it makes life a little easier in terms of finding a really good deal. And the other other piece is using points that you get from traveling. Utilize those as much as possible. So conservatively, I'd say that's a pretty safe number. We can go ahead and add the food in there. So let's say that you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm not a breakfast guy, all I need is coffee. But let's say you spend $10 a meal, which is fair, and that's over three days for these groups. So that's $90 per trip. And so remember we talked about 16 different groups. I broke it down into three states and almost every single one. I know my math isn't always adding up there because there are a couple groups that actually do have more than three states some less than three. 90 times 16 is 1440, $1,440. So we can add that on the conservative side to that 10,400. The total with food and travel expenses, not doing any kind of fun activities, but there's a lot of free stuff that you can do too, is $11,840. It seems like a lot, but what I'm also saying is this is over a specified amount of time. So for me, it's been 30 years, well, 30 years in June. And if you break it down, it's actually not that bad at all. So let's say 
that you haven't had a chance to travel at all, you didn't have any money in college, and let's say you get really started at like 22 years old. Let's say you still have the same goal too, you wanna hit it by 30. Divide $11,840 by eight years, that's gonna be $1,480 a year. So divide this by 12, that's only $123 a month. Some people are paying that in phone bills, some people are paying that in utility bills. All I'm saying is that it's very realistic. If you've got a job and you're making 30, 40, 50 grand, you can go get this done. But it's all about if you actually want to make it happen. That's all I got for the very first one. Remember, this is part one of the finishing out the 50 state. I wish I had the foresight to record all of this when I was completing this earlier on, but all I got left is my 10 states. Well, these three, and then of course seven before I'm 30. So you guys are gonna enjoy the journey as we go along. I'm gonna continue bringing on hacks and things like that, but this is definitely one of the bucket list items that is going to continue on. Thanks for watching. If you like the video and this is possibly gonna help you out when you travel, go ahead and like it. If you wanna come back and see more bucket list content, go ahead and press subscribe. If you wanna learn a little more about the official 50 Stater website, I'm gonna post that in the description below. And I hope everyone has an excellent new year and you bring in 2019 the right way. See ya.